What's going on D21 Nissan D21 hard body nuts out there today? We have another video. We're gonna be doing some brakes. Oh Yeah, it's about that fucking time It's about Mid 70s the humidity is like at 35 38 40 percent today This is that time when you actually uh, want to get out there and have fun Tinkering with your your beloved ride your project or your ever or your daily um, you guys that are Looking to do brakes, front brakes, and replace calipers. That's This is the video for you. I'm not doing the rotors today, but I'm going to be doing the front calipers and the front stainless steel brake lines. Um, I had um, I got to do a little bit sooner because my original driver's side caliper exploded a piston seal the other day. There was brake fluid all over the place, and, and I'll show you what that looks like. So let's get under the way. First of all, I want to say on the, the Royal Purple... It runs cooler, better gas mileage, definitely runs quieter than what it already was. Uh, gets rid of any low idle knocking or clatter in the valve train. Not like I already had it. I had any, but it it um it also lets the oil hit the uh, timing chain tensioner. In case you guys that have old tensioning guides that are broken before you had the the new versions put in, where the chain slaps on this side, it slaps on this side. The tensioner is on the other side. So the tensioner pushes against the chain and that's what keeps the chain nice and in line. So it's this side, the guide that runs on this side that breaks if it's not steel backed. Um, so sometimes it only does it for about a second and the immediate oil flow being full synthetic 1030 Royal Purple goes straight to the oil gullies and gets to all the, the, oil, um, the places that the oil needs to go to with higher pressure. All right, so... Everything. Oh, that cube is just for my fat ass to sit on. All right, so we got the Pro Lift three ton jacks from Amazon. We got the uh, I want to say Tonka, but it says Tonda uh, <laughs> two and a half ton uh, floor jack. We got the uh, three eighths quarter inch Dewalt hammer drill, and we got the um, it's literally called the Popo Man. Um, uh, it's a hammer drill. It's a uh, intermediate light duty, uh, but not extreme heavy duty for like uh, small and compact medium sized vehicle lug nuts. Um, so we're also going to be using the uh, fuck is this thing called? Um, it's a caliper bleeder. Now this looks like something. It looks medieval. It looks like something you would. Uh, uh, looks like a sexual toy to me. But I'm not even thinking of that shit. It looks like, I don't know, penis pump, rectal, and larger. I don't know. But anyway, I know how it works. I'm just making jokes. I got my brakes from O'Reilly's, and they're called Best Brakes. Left and right front caliper. There's the part numbers. Right. And always represent sport bike track gear. Your, um, yeah. Just look it up, sportbiketrackgear.com. You know what the fuck I'm talking about. All right, here's the calipers. This will be the passenger side, right? And they do come with the um, caliper brackets. So they give you brand new brackets, sleeves, gaskets, because what makes a full floating caliper a full floating caliper? It's the idea that the caliper could move back and forth and release the brake pressure when off the brakes. Where on motorcycles, the disc brakes are floating, but on cars and trucks, the calipers are floating. Okay, this is the this is the uh, driver side. Remember, guys, when I was saying how you know our old school truck front brakes. I mean, what I'm saying old school is that they're just solid discs, right? And you see, this is the big old piston. And there's piston seals. You can literally see a rubber seal. They're, they're, they, they pop in a groove around the piston. They hold the hydraulic fluid, the brake fluid behind this piston. So when you press on the, the pedal, the piston comes out. So whenever you do brakes, you need a caliper compressor to push that piston back in. But since they're already all the way in, only thing I'm going to have to do is just um, bleed the brakes after uh, taking the old calipers off and the old brake lines. But... um. Yeah, this is pretty much it. It's not rocket science. 
there's the bleeder so usually when you do your front brakes right you normally undo one of these bolts and the whole caliper just swings up right up or down or you take them out calipers usually just hanging there like a fucking like i'm dying over here just hanging on the brake line and shit um but in this case we're going to take off the whole the bracket assembly so basically these two big bastards and that's just going to release the whole unit with the old brackets um, still attached. The all torn and tattered, almost 30-year-old um, floating pin seals and everything. So this is all good new stuff. Um, this is where you want to get your crush washers. This is your banjo. This is where your, um, your stainless steel brake lines will go in. Where the fuck are they? Don't tell me I forgot them. Yes, here they are, like so. All right, stainless steel brake lines. And since I'm not doing the uh, slotted rotors, slotted and vented cross drill rotors um, today, because basically what I'm doing is I'm getting the truck ready for winter. I already did the engine, and since I got this blown caliper, I need to uh, replace it because that well that's your brakes that's your ass and there goes bye bye project if you s smash it up right anyway so um, these are the anti vibration normally I have a system <laughs> you know a system of shit being uh, nice and neat but in this case let's talk about brake pads real quick right real quick. And this is going to be a part one. And the next video below this video is going to be the actual footage of me doing this shit. All right. See, so when I bought the truck, a buddy of mine sold it me with, he had bought um, brand new brake pads, spare water pump, every spare fucking sensor, minus the MAF sensor, TPS sensors. Those went to uh, Mr. Cusk, the guy who, brought the, uh, who bought the high flow induction system for the TBI on this channel um i took the video down because it's on it's on his truck now and it runs it's uh cusk just look him up on uh youtube yeah he bought that shit for me it works good on his truck anyway i think he wants to turbo it too later on but anyway so these brake pads are centered now they're not re they're not stress relieved in the middle usually there's a line in the middle that helps dissipate brake dust etc so these are just solid centered um, brake pads in other words they got little metal flakes in there that's what helps uh heat dissipation it gives you better grabbing grabbing on the the um, rotors and uh it, it deals with heat a lot better and low dust because regular regular cheap brakes are asbestos or um some kind of like a material so so these are the better after these are the better brakes so whenever you go buy brakes for your truck and they're going to ask you, there's like three types of brake pads. There's like the real cheap ones, the asbestos, there's the intermediate ones, and then there's the, the high bite. I like the high bite because it requires less pedal brake feel. And when you really need to uh, get on the binders, they'll really do a good job of stopping. So to help defeat um, heat transfer and uh, front brake um, front brake loss feel, we go with stainless steel brake lines in the front because... These won't budge. They won't like flex under heavy brake loads. Remember on these trucks, most of the weight transfers in the front. It's like 60, 40 or 65, 75, meaning 65 in the front, 75 in the rear. Unless you're using it like a truck and you got the rear loaded. That's why you have drum brakes because they're, they can deal with the weight a little bit better. Um, and they don't need, they're not like high speed brakes. They're, they're good for slowing down heavy loads. And so that's why you have a differentiating valve in your braking system. So as light as these trucks are in the rear, when you drive them just like an everyday car, most of your braking is in the front because that's where your, your weight is in the cab, etc. So that's why you have like a, a, a bias split, like a 36, like a 30, 70. It's like 75, 35, 70, 30. Because if you had full braking force front and rear, your back would always lock up and your front wouldn't. So when you have no load in the back, meaning no no um no extra weight, no towing weight in the back. Yeah, these these trucks are kind of light, especially when you transfer all the weight forward. So, today I'm just going to replace the calipers, the brake lines, 
and throw in these uh, better brake pads that already came with it when I got the truck. I still have the slotted and slotted and drilled, cross drilled, uh, high performance rotors and their brake pads at my apartment. Um, since we're going into winter now, um, yeah, I'm not going to, uh, you know, slap the rotors on today. But I'm going to get this out of the way because I need the calipers and the brake lines. So whenever I do the rotors, I'm going to just unbolt the caliper bracket, the thing that holds the caliper in place, and move it out of the way because you need to move that out of the way to pull off the rotor because it's a two-piece rotor hub assembly where the hub is a centerpiece that holds the, the bearings because the hub goes on the, the, the spindle, right? Your bearings are inside the hub, but you got six bolts that bolt that rotor onto that hub. So you don't ever really have to replace the hubs, just the rotors. So anyway, so this is a, a quick overview of the things you're gonna need. This is just to help sit down on the side. I'm gonna jack up the front of the truck. I'm gonna take off the front wheels. And after I get the wheels off, then it'll be the second part of the video. All right, guys? All right, stick around, peace.